and welcome back. This is Lee St. John and you are listening to Quiet Achievers and Unsung Heroes. I have Christopher J. Cooper with me who is definitely a, well, a not so quiet (laughs) achiever, (laughs) but definitely an unsung hero. Now, Chris, just before we went to a break, I said when we come back, we're going to hear a little bit more about the community work that you do and some of the, 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 the changes that you're making in people's lives. Can you fill us in a little? Sure. Well, I'm involved in a plethora of community service initiatives. Yeah, and if um, I listed them, I could actually just read them by title and I'd take <laughs> the next five or six minutes. So pick, pick a couple, Chris. Pick a couple. Okay, well, one thing um, that I'm very proud of, about being about, um, I have a very um, strong um, belief and interest in the development of young African-American men like myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, two organizations in particular that I do, well, actually three, that I do tons of work specifically with African-American American um, men um, are Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, which is my fraternity, yep. and um, I am an active Kappa League um, mentor. Um, it's crazy. I've had one of my mentees since he was in eighth grade, wow. and he is now a sophomore in college at Emory University on a full scholarship, oh. and it's just amazing. comes from a very, very bad situation. Um, it's, um, um, father was incarcerated, brother's incarcerated, uh, mother's just tr- a single mom trying to do the best she can. Uh, and um, it's just amazing. He just has this spark. Okay, well, and... well, pause there for a second. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people like this kid that are out there. Right. How do people go about becoming mentors for these people? The first thing I would say is that if you are affiliated with any type of organization whatsoever, look for these young men and women across the nation. Um, what I did is, um, you know, through formalized quote unquote programs, I was able to find uh, mentees that were looking for different types of things. I mean, you can find them at a community rally, you can go to a local community center, um, Boys and Girls Club of America. I mean, there's so many outlets. And people think that they have to do this huge, amazing thing. No, it's just a small thing. Sometimes it just takes one word that you say. Um, to a young man or to a young woman that can change their lives forever. I mean, I know for a fact that it's, when it comes to self-esteem and things like that, that if it, it takes 20 positive comments to counteract one negative thing said to a child. Yeah, at least. Um, yeah. So, you know, so I would say that definitely if, if they want to get involved, just, I mean, look at your church, look at your community center, look at, look at if it, even if it's not your church, just go to, some, <laughs> go to someone's church or someone's organization and say, you know, is there any way that I can help to reach these, these, these young people? Because they, they need it. This is our future guys. I yeah, well, mean, even, you know. even here in Las Vegas, I'm working with uh, one of our magnet schools, Clark High School, and Excellent. we're always looking for mentors to step up with some programs there. So I'll actually be sharing with you um, uh, from maybe next week, maybe the week after about a brand new program that we're starting there with the kids, which is really exciting. Beautiful. But uh, Beautiful. okay, go on. Yes. Um, so, you know, and, and with this young man in particular, um, and it was just like, you know, you kind of had that whole little, like, sp- I could see the spark in him. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I just gravitated to him, and he gravitated to me, and he was like, Mr. Kuvra, and I was like, yes. And he was like, will you be my mentor? And I said, great, of course, I would love to, because there's an actual formal matching process, and yes. they want to make sure that it's a, a, you know, a viable relationship for, for you and, and the mentee. Mm-hmm. And he just began to tell me about his dreams and stuff. And then, you know, and, and, I, and I would take him different places, and I would expose him to culture and expose him to things um, that he, he wouldn't see. I mean, specifically, like I said, I live, I live in Atlanta now, and there are so many, just like Las Vegas, mm-hmm. so many individuals, so many kids that haven't even been to the airport, yes. much less, you know, across the country or across the world or anything like that. So just that, that, that exposure, and you know what? Sometimes you don't even have to say a whole lot. These kids want somebody to talk to. That's all. They want someone to listen. Yeah. That's all they want. Um, so through that relationship, like I said, now he's, I mean, you know, a big, robust young man, <laughs> you know, doing extremely well in, in, in college, and, and I'm very grateful for that. Another organization um, that I do a lot of work with, once again, you know, putting on my techie hat, mm-hmm. is the National Society of Black Engineers. And actually, we're having our national convention um, in um, Las Vegas in March. Oh, wow. Um, and so we're about to bring about 15,000 um, black engineering, engineering students from across the world into the city of Las Vegas. My so understand we will be doing community service projects, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll make sure you get that information, Lee, and you can forward it on to whoever needs it. That would it. be fantastic. And, look um, out Las Vegas. Chris Cooper is coming Vegas. to town. <laughs> NSVE. Nesby is coming. Um, <laughs> but one thing that I really wanted to share is that um, I recently um, – took a position um, on a board of directors for an organization called the Renaissance Group. Yeah, now this now, is this is fascinating. Oh Tell us gosh. more. This is th- this was by far because this is the South Africa trip, like, right? It is. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this was by far the most 
amazing experience um, of any type of community service or, or project that I've done in my life. All right, so start with the background. What is the Renaissance okay. Group before you the actually get into the story? Group, okay, the Renaissance Group was actually started by a young lady that went to um, Stelman College and Georgia Tech and now is at, at, at NYU. She works for um, Colgate. And uh, another uh, a lady who was really instrumental and in, um, um, connected to the Magic Johnson Foundation in LA. And basically, um, Dr. Conti, um, who's, which, which is her name, she is um, also a photographer. And she went on a mission trip to South Africa, um, of course, you know, spreading the gospel, good news, um, all those types of things, and really kind of rebuilding the community. When she was there, she had such a connection that she could not believe, and ultimately decided that she, that she wanted to create an organization and bring young people from America to come over and see exactly all these struggles that these young people are having in in, in South Africa and all throughout Africa, and actually, instead of always, you know, talking about how bad things are, actually make a difference in the lives of these students. So um, through the group, through the Renaissance Group, um, TRG International, actually, um, they um, started, um, and I actually went on the second um, uh, conference ever, but they started this um, mini pilgrimage, I would say, every year. It happens in June. And, they said, and I met Dr. Conti when I was moderating a panel on entrepreneurship. And she happened to be there, and she was like, Chris, I want you to come to South Africa. And I was like, yeah. I was like, great, I'm coming. She's like, yeah, 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 that's what everybody tells me. And then I called her back, and I said, I have my ticket. She's like, are you serious? I was like, yes. And anyway, so over the course of two and a half weeks, we do everything from building a preschool to doing a leadership conference for, for students. And let me tell you, there's a specific need there because we focus – primarily on giving a voice to those who do not have a voice. And these students that we deal with are orphans. I mean, many of them, and they're orphans, um, specifically um, 200 of them that are at a school in, called Inanda Comprehensive um, School, and it's in Durban, South Africa. And these students, it's, it's just amazing to me. They didn't even have running water or a restroom in their school last year, wow. and they have one now. But it just amazed me that these kids have so much joy and love and faith and belief and, and a thirst for education because they, they understand that education is definitely a vehicle to get out of their environment and, and out of that type of thing. So when I was there, I, I actually got a chance to, I mean, just, as I said, build, build the play school, I mean, the, the preschool, and um, they were actually having school on a school bus, literally, because the building was not um, suitable for anybody to even be in. So we actually helped build the building and, and painted the walls and, you know, and took everything off of the actual school bus that they were using and got these little orphans and gave them all different types of gifts and stuff that we bought from America and all that kind of stuff. But what really touched me the most was that I was one of the, as I said, I, I headed up um, part of the, the leadership, mini leadership conference we did for these, um, for the actual high school students um, at this Ananda Comprehensive High School. And when I was there, um, I was only there for a week. Mm -hmm. But these kids are sponges, and they absorb everything yeah. that you say. And I gave a workshop on entrepreneurship and all these other kind of things. But at the end of it, they taught us authentic African dances. And it was the Zulu tribe, of course, being in that part of South Africa. Mm -hmm. And at the end, they gave each of the Americans an authentic African name. Now, it's not like in America where we just say, oh, that's a cute name and that's wonderful. No, their names actually mean something. And it really stresses their importance and their connection to their culture and to their belief and all that kind of stuff. And I love these kids so much and I was other people's names um, that they received uh, the, uh, the Americans that were with us they got names that meant like love and peace and joy and happiness and mm -hmm. God's gift and all this, which were great and wonderful but when they got to me they named me Vusi Vusi for short the longer form is Vusi Sisi way and what it means is he who raises up nations wow and I, I, it was literally a waterfall. I mean, I could, I'm getting emotional now. I, I just could not. I, I just, I mean, it was a waterfall of tears because you know what it was? As I said previously, when my mother uh, was 16 years old and my family told her um, that she was too young to have a child and that type of stuff, and she said that she knew that God told her that one day I would go all around the, all around the world literally, um, you know, speaking to people and inspiring them and encouraging them and speaking life into them. And to have these kids reconfirm that message, you know, almost 30 years later on the complete other side of the world was just an amazing – and these kids only knew me for a week, yeah. just for one week. But they understood that it was just – they understood, I think, the impact. And, and, and I got so much more from them hmm. than I could have possibly think that I had given to them. And it was just, it was just, it was, it was, it was life changing. And, you know, and I'm going back again in, in this upcoming June and Great. it was just, um, I just, wow. I mean, that, 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 that 
chapter in my life was was a huge thing, and it was a great completion, as I said, um, for, for for my twenties. <laughs> as I move to the other side. Yeah, the but, other uh, side. Thank you very much for those of us who side. are in our forties and fifties. Yeah, moving right. <laughs> the better side. And um, no, that was just an amazing, amazing thing. Um, and uh, and I'm doing lots of different things with other organizations, like at the Hundred Black Men um, Empowerment Resource Network. I mean, just tons of different things, um, communities and schools here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there, there's the, the list goes on and on because you know what? I understand that I really believe that to whom much is given, much is expected and required. And there's no reason why, like I said, if an inner city kid born to, uh, you know, a teen mother who, you know, who all the quote unquote odds were against, who almost lost his life on his 16th birthday, can now, you know, stand strong, you know, with, um, you know, with a lovely wife and a great, you know, an amazing little little boy and, you know, and quote unquote what people consider to be success. But you know what? That that success is not enough. I think, and, and I want your listeners and, and everyone across the world to just understand that success is great. It can come and go. But the really important thing is that we want to be significant. And we want to, we want it to matter that we were here and that we left an indelible mark that can never be erased by anybody or anything. And Chris, a lot of people uh, who are listening as well will say, well, look, you know, it, it's great. He's, he's now made some money, so he's able to give back. Fill us in on ways that that you were giving back before you'd actually made that money. Because, oh wow! And yeah. I'm still and I, believe me, I don't make a lot of it. <laughs> However, um, ways to give back. I mean, just it's just you know what people always think that in order to do community service and these types of things, I got to have money. I have to be able to give. I have to be able to to monetarily provide for someone. But once again, like I said, through that mentoring and through those other types of activities, what you're giving up is yourself and your time. And time is so important because, you know what, time is the only thing you can't get back. You can get money back. And it's also the (laughs) only thing that's equal across all of us. Every single one of us has the same amount of time. time. We do. Yet some people achieve amazing things with it right. and others complain about not right. having enough of it. Right. So yeah. And but one of my favorite equal. musicals is, is Rent. And they talk about 525,600 yeah. minutes in a year. I mean, how do you measure a year in a life? And, it's, and, it, and how we manage those 525,600 minutes are so, is, is so pivotal in, in our ultimate success. So like I said, the money, it doesn't even matter. My wife actually works in nonprofit now, and, you know, and she you know, does grant writing and fundraising and, and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, she, just like she and I both, you know, always have known that we always wanted to give money away. So we're like, okay, God, you need to give us some money so we can give it away. <laughs> but just understand that, like I said, the money, the money is, is so not the point. The point is give of yourself and give of your time. And like you said, it's the only thing that's equal. And it's amazing, you know, just speaking and spending some time and being that listening ear and, and all that kind of stuff or that shoulder to cry on for, for young people and, you know, and for other, you know, even adults that are going through some challenges. And I mean, this is a, this is a very tough time out there right now economically, as we all know. And um, there are so many people, and, you know, as I coach my clients and things like that, people are just going through and they're hurting and they're looking for something. And you know what, in a handout and giving somebody $20, that's, that's, that, that, those days are, I'm not going to say completely over because people need financial resources as well. But honestly, I think what people really need is to have the opportunity to make their own realities. Along the lines of, you know, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, right. teach exactly. him to fish, and you exactly. feed him for a lifetime. Exactly, exactly. And that's what we do also, even with the students in South Africa, speaking of that. Um, you know, we don't, like I said, we took a lot of stuff to those kids, but we, we make sure they understand they have to work for it. We've made them ambassadors. They actually are actively involved in, like, soliciting funds and getting school, um, you know, right. things for their school supplies. Um, they, you know, they earn, they earn the stuff. It's not a matter of we're just handing stuff out. We're teaching them principles that they can implement, you know, how to go to college. How to get it? How to get an education? How to pay for it? How to save? Um, another organization that I'm affiliated with is called the Economic Empowerment Initiative, and what they do is uh, it's all about financial literacy. And, and what we do with these kids is, you know, and these are high school students here, high school and college students. I'm sorry, here in the states. And what we do is, you know, if they save five hundred dollars in a semester, um, we have a, a relationship with Bank of America. Bank of America will provide another five hundred dollars to match it. But you have to, like I said, you have to teach people the, the principles, the principles of, of, of sowing and reaping and all those types of things, because you know, you can't just give handouts. Handouts, it doesn't work, and it doesn't really give people like a sense of uh, of security and accomplishment. And honestly, most people don't want handouts. They want to be able to earn their own way. They want to be able to provide for their families. They want to be able to do better and be and be amazing people. Um, but they just need the opportunity because I really believe that success is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. And yeah. when you're prepared and those doors open, I mean, it's you know, the sky is not even the limit. <laughs>